Hello, this is Debbie seidel Bicky, and welcome to your webinar called Seven Steps to Reduce Cancellations and Grow Your Practice. There is so much information on this topic that I want to share with you and I hope you've scheduled at least an hour and a half for this webinar. Many of you have requested this information so that you can have a team meeting and talk about solutions. And I want to recommend that you have your handout printed now. I've added a few pages, not only so you can follow along, but so that you'll have some tools so that you can implement some of these seven steps. If there's just one step that you can pick to implement over the next week, you're going to be in a different place in your dental practice next week, if you can do that this week as a team. So let's get started now. You may be working hard. Many of you are working hard rescheduling or taking calls from patients calling to change their appointment. It's hard to fill your schedule and it's getting harder when you need to meet your production goals and think that you don't have enough patients to call to fill those holes. But what if you were not to work so hard, but what if you could train hard once so that you didn't have to work so hard? And that's what we're going to do is we're going to walk through this training. This is the first layer of getting to that next level of reduced cancellations. And what if you could train with this webinar, implement a few things, and then enjoy your day more because things are more likely to fall in place next week. Can life really become easier than it may seem today? Well, I want you to know that you are here in the right place if you want to grow your practice and reduce cancellations. Now, I'm sure that you're here because of that reason. And my hope is that you'll take away just one golden nugget and that you'll try over the next week to begin implementing it. My hope is that you will try whatever that one thing is, not just for the next week, but try it for the next three weeks because it usually takes about 21 days to build a habit. And this today is that first level of training, knowing what you need to do, and the second layer will be actually doing it and then becoming good at it. And many of us who will listen to this webinar are actually here as a team for your own training. If you're here with an open mind, please try to do something new. Make a commitment to do something new tomorrow. Can I get an I? If you're with your team right now watching this webinar, if you're in agreement that you're open to trying something new after you, I'm going to share with you seven steps, but I'm also going to share with you more information as bonus tips that you can also implement. So there are a lot of choices. Can I get an I that you'll at least choose one of these to implement tomorrow? And if you're with your team, maybe you don't want to be yelling out at each other. So can you at least give each other a high five before we get started with the webinar? And what is it? I want to ask you, what is your why? Why do you want to be here? Why do you want to grow your practice? Why do you want more new patients coming in if that's what you want to change? Why do you want to reduce the cancellations? So. I want to say that cancellations, patient no-shows, patients calling to change their appointments, I don't say it's an epidemic. I say that appointment cancellations, they're at a pandemic stage. There are so many people, even when I'm out in the public, I hear them talking about this, whether I'm exercising in a fitness class or I'm talking 
on the phone with new inquiries. We had several calls in the last week from dentists asking, do you have a protocol to eliminate cancellations? And then I'm exercising during my lunch break and there are hygienists there in the exercise class. They drove a half hour to exercise and they were able to do it saying, that, oh, I'm so glad I had the whole afternoon off. I don't go back until four o'clock to see my next patient. And if you don't have a reason why you want to change this, then everything else is going to be meaningless. The goal typically never gets accomplished when you don't know your why to get something new changed. What is your burning desire? What gets your blood to a boiling point if it never happens? If you have one open hole in your schedule each day, Maybe it's not a big enough reason to really do anything about it, but if you would like to have four new patients each month or a few hundred patients by the end of the year, maybe it's a burning desire for you. I mean, we work with offices who are seeing 16, 14 new patients a month, and when we put a plan together, when we have a step-by-step -step process like I'm giving you today, Four new patients from 16 to 20 is a big deal. And then going from 20 the next month to 25 and the month next month to 32 and the next month to 40, it happens. I'm going to show you how that happens and how we monitor it and make it happen. So there are millions of people. I know in, in the United States, there are millions of us watching these reality TV shows. And I must admit... I'm going to be totally honest with you. In my spare time on the weekends, I actually record it during the week, and then on the weekends, I watch these recorded shows of HGTV. Have you heard about it? My favorite one is called Flip or Flop. Well, this is a house that was recently on the show, and I wanted to share this house with you. Now, they usually they buy a foreclosure or a bank owned property and I can't remember if this was bank owned but they bought this and it's just it's awful looking on the outside you know the people who originally owned this they never really it looks like they didn't do anything to the outside of their house they didn't even water the grass for months maybe over a year and for years they never even touched up with paint and I bring this up because what I have found is when we don't work on our business, it just rots. I mean, it's something that you've got to do every week, every day, every month. There needs to be a plan in place. And that's why I'm asking you to just take one step today. Choose one of these steps and begin working on your business, your dental practice. And if you don't work on it, it's going to rot like in this picture. But what happens is these homes are bank owned or foreclosed and this adorable couple, Christina and Tarek Lamusa, they're on the show. They're the stars of the show and they're a married couple. They buy these homes cash usually and they fix them up. So they're experts that are working on these homes that have been left to rot. And let me walk you through what happens. Here's when you walk in the door of that house. I mean, not real pretty. Most of the offices that we work with, they're gorgeous. I mean, granite countertops, the walls have beautiful paintings. They've had some help, right? Well, this house is going to be demolished. And that's exactly what they did. And I want you to put a thought in your mind that you're going to take away one of the things that you're doing and add something new, one of these steps. Because look at this. These people were just doing a patchwork, you know. They didn't want to fix the bathtub. They didn't want to put a lot of money into it. So what they did was they had a leaky bathtub. This is the shower curtain. Kind of gross that they put the shower curtain in the bottom of the bathtub to prevent the leak. I don't know how well that worked, but I just found it so disgusting when you walk through this house. And then with some expert help, look at what happened to this house. I mean, the outside is so beautiful compared to where we first started. And look at the inside. 
Isn't that beautiful? And it's the same transformation that can take place on the inside of your business if you'll just take one baby step after this webinar to begin implementing one thing. And many times it's hard for you to implement it because you don't know what is the first baby step that could be very powerful for you. So that's when we have experts that are consultants like myself that you can call in and I'll show you how you can painlessly ask for some help. And it's at the end of the webinar. I wanted you to know that we have an amazing system and we teach all of these seven steps and more when we talk and work professionally with our clients to reduce cancellations, no shows, and help grow their practice. It's all put together for you so that you don't have to worry about which step to take first and many times it's hard to find somebody to actually implement. So step number one is your hygiene department systems. Does your hygiene department have a system? And if you have more than one hygienist working in your office, does every hygienist understand how to create a partnership? Really pull up their lab coat sleeves to be more than a tooth cleaner. I'm not talking about a friendship where patients look forward to the chit chat and the fun time they spend with their hygienist. I remember those days as a clinician, as a hygienist, and some of the patients really looked forward to coming in to see me. But I'm talking about catching up to learn more about their total health. I'm talking about do you have a system in place that begins assessing your patients from the moment you say hello walking them back to be seated in the dental chair all throughout the review of medical history your various assessments collecting your data throughout the treatment planning process throughout the doctor hygiene exam and we have systems for all of these different areas of the hygiene department that we work we take baby steps with you to have a very big outcome without working so hard. So it's kind of like you're calling in the experts because things are broken down on the inside like we saw in the house and in the end everything is shiny and new and it's so easy. Things work so much better. Things work in harmony and there's a cohesive track, a cohesive system for the entire team to work like they're a well-oiled machine. My question is you, to you is, do you know, do your patients know about your appointment change policy? It happens about 90% of the time when we first start working with a client or when they call to ask us, do you have a protocol for appointment cancellations. How can we eliminate all these cancellations? And what we discover is that there is no appointment change or you might call it a cancellation policy. So what I want to talk about is the appointment change policy and there are multiple ways that we're going to talk about to reduce cancellations and grow your practice but do your patients know about this policy? When was the last time it was discussed with them and brought to their eyesight that they had to read the policy and understand that you wanted 48 or as I recommend 72 hours notice before they call to change their appointment? One of our clients, I just love her. I mean, she is a dentist. It's a woman dentist and she recently had she actually called a patient who once again no-showed. I can't remember. It may have been that he, well, he called that day, I believe, and he said he couldn't come in. And he was a chronic last-minute appointment changer, or should I say he was an appointment cancellation abuser. Anyways, doctor told the patient exactly what she thought about the man doing his standard call to not come in last minute. That's what he's been doing for the last six or nine months. And this was about his fourth time doing it this last six, nine months. 
So doctor, she's just livid. And we've been talking about this appointment change policy, and they've been showing the new policy to their patients to have it updated, just like you update your medical history. Now our clients start having their patients update their, not only the medical history, HIPAA, financial arrangement, but their patient change appointment policy. So he's not there to update it. And she calls and she says, you know, uh, I know that you weren't here today. What's going on? And he says, doctor, you need to understand that I'm running a business and I have things that I just can't walk out of my office to go to a dental appointment for. And I was so proud of our client because she told him, so, Mr. Patient, what do you think I'm doing here? What do you think I'm running over here at my office? And I love that she was bold and she personally called and talked to him about his abusive behavior with their business and their appoint his appointments. So, you know, what are you doing to help keep your patients on your schedule? Now, I'm not suggesting that doctor call all the patients that abuse the schedule. But I am suggesting that you let your patients know that they need to call you in a specific amount of time if they need to change. I mean, it's just a common courtesy. So teach your patients how to treat you. Step number two. And I ask our clients, do, I'll ask the doctor sometimes, have you told the team what you expect of them? And we work with clients who they don't meet with their employees and so their employees have originally told me I don't know what doctors expecting of me and it's the same thing with your patients tell them what you expect of them do you have a written notice and they sign that periodically and if you're noticing you're on this call probably this webinar because you have a lot of cancellations no shows failed appointments and so I want to suggest one of the things that you do is update your change of appointment policy. If you never tell your patients what you expect of them, your patients will do whatever they think is best for them, not you. From this point forward, today and always, mix these words. Number one, cleaning. We are not in the business of cleaning people's teeth. We are not hiring cleaning ladies or janitors to clean our patients' teeth. We're dental healthcare professionals. And in the 21st century, the dental hygiene appointment in particular is around treating our patients to live a longer and healthier life. It's about preventing disease, not cleaning teeth. Hygienists are preventive therapists. And we are all, as a team, creating a healthier, longer life, even if you're not a hygienist. So stop using the word cancellation and also change that word cancellation to change of appointment and stop saying the word cleaning all day long. I'm hearing that when I'm in your offices for the first time. I hear you saying, we're calling to remind you of your cleaning appointment. You know, people nowadays are too busy to have a reminder. They should have a reminder popping up in their calendar, and you should be able to send them a quick message by text or email to confirm their appointment, and you're not calling about a cleaning. So real important to change these words. Think about using words from this day forward that add value to your patient's appointments. So cleaning teeth kind of gives that connotation like they're getting a facial, they're getting a haircut. And so when you're talking to your patients about a hygiene appointment, are they coming in for routine preventive care? Are they coming in for periodontal or gum therapy? Think about these words that are more valuable than saying a cleaning or a deep cleaning. It's not a deep cleaning that they're getting. They're actually getting a therapeutic treatment for their gums, gum therapy, or maybe your patient can understand and embrace the word periodontal. So you can say periodontal therapy. So stop adding a lot of fluff because when I'm in your offices, honestly, I have heard patients calling when I'm there in the, your office and they're calling to change their 
dental hygiene appointment because they can only get in to see their hairdresser at the same time they have an appointment for their hygienist. I mean, seriously, it's got to stop. So always set clear expectations, written and verbal, with your patients. So um, tell your patients, we're going to talk about this a little bit more, but let them know when they're calling to leave a message to change their appointment on your voicemail. Your voicemail needs to state that they cannot leave a message to change an appointment. They need to call during business hours. I'll talk about that a little bit more. So here are some th steps about your voicemail. I want your voicemail message. I highly recommend and this I want you to think. Remember I asked you to be open with an open mind, so I want you to think about this. Step outside the box. Do something different than the other dentist down the street. Do something to get your patient's attention. And what happens when they call your office and hear, this is Dr. Goodtooth, this is Dr. Blank, fill in the blank of your doctor's name. And it's his or her voice that they hear saying it's them. Thank you for calling our office. You've reached our office when we're either with a patient or you know wherever you you know we have a script and you can email us at support at dentalpracticesolutions.com we have about a paragraph script and it recommends what you can say and you can tweak it to be your own but it also says this voicemail does not accept change of appointments if it's urgent that you speak to someone you can call my cell phone and by the way how many people do you think have ever told me that a patient called their doctor's cell phone when they needed to change their appointment? Most of the time when your patients are leaving a voicemail to change their appointment, it's kind of like a scapegoat. They really don't have a good reason. If it's so important for them to change something that's going to help them live a longer and a healthier life or prevent a toothache or cost them thousands of dollars if that tooth gets abscessed because it's not getting restored. I hope they understand how valuable your appointment is to them and they are able to pick up the phone and speak to you live. And that's what you need to tell them. When patients feel urgency, when they know what's in it for them, seriously know what it's going to do for their body, for them personally, I think they're more likely to come to their appointment. And you need to be enthusiastic and passionate about the importance for them coming back to your office. Here's number three. Step three is basically what I'm saying here is know your plan and follow the plan. When you have an appointment change policy, everyone on the team, including the doctor, needs to know what that is and they need to all follow the plan. Remember I talked at the beginning that you must have a plan and your system will come, you're going to have a system. I said in the beginning you need to have a system and your system is going to come from the plan and then you need to follow the plan that you've put in place. Here we are on this webinar and you're learning all this valuable information but what will you implement after you learn all these steps? And I'm going to tell you that nothing will change unless you implement just one thing after this webinar and then continue to follow the plan with just that one step that you choose to create a system around that one step that you're choosing to implement tomorrow. And remember, the beginning of this year, think back to what types of resolutions you made. So many people I talked to, and I saw it at my gym, they wanted to lose fat. They wanted to lose weight. They wanted to get in better shape. They wanted better health this year. Some of you on this webinar probably can relate to this because you had a goal to lose a few pounds. You maybe want to get beach bikini ready still. And I want to ask you, how's that resolution you made going today months later? Are you on track? Have you forgotten about your resolution? Who's holding you accountable? And this is why you have each other and I hope it's why you're choosing to implement this with your team and watching this webinar as a team. And this is why we have coaches. I have coaches. It helps us to keep on track not only for our fitness goals 
but for your practice success. And I'm going to show you how to stay on track in a few minutes. Painlessly, you can create these changes that you want and need to do for your next level of success. And at the end of the webinar, I'm going to show you how to up level and grow your practice very quickly. So step four is implementation of your plan for future success. If you want to reduce those calls to change appointments, then you actually need to set up a plan with the system in place. And you need to begin using, for example, your change of appointment form. If you're getting too many patients calling to change appointments and you, some patients are just not showing, then get a new change of appointment policy in place and have your patients update this. When they review their medical history, they need to also review their change of appointment policy. They read it and sign it. It becomes a part of their patient record. And it's just like you updating their medical history. You're doing that, right? You update their medical history. And this is going to take maybe 60 seconds more to update your change of appointment policy. So make sure that you create a deadline for your patients to change their appointment. I said this a few minutes ago. I suggest 72 hours notice if a patient needs to change the appointment. You may not agree with that. I say 72 hours because a large majority of our clients do not work on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Some don't work Saturday, Sunday, or Monday. So imagine that you're closed on Friday and on Friday, Friday, which is three days before, now they call, oh my gosh, you're in trouble because Monday morning, I mean, how many of you are closed on Friday and you walk in Monday morning, listen to those messages, you've got at least two people who change their appointment on your voicemail. So that's why I want to recommend no voicemail changes and at least 72 hours because now they have to call, hopefully they called on Thursday to change their appointment. you got to get them thinking of urgency and that's going to help you to reduce those cancellations. Urgency to come in because they know there's an important value to your service. So we track everything with our clients and I wanted to share this one with you. I'm going to talk about this. We measure everything, okay? Here are the broken and these are canceled. Those are patients who called and these are patients who called ahead. Um, they called four days ahead of their appointment. There were 134 of them. Oh my gosh, that's a lot, you know, in just that month. Um, actually, no, actually, I think this is for the year, sorry. And then broken appointments. Those are people who called. I consider it broken if they called on a Friday and left a message, which I hope they're not going to do that anymore from this day forward. You're going to change that policy. They can't leave messages. But anybody who knows showed and somebody who told you, I just can't make it, and they are changing their appointment two or three days out, um, I consider that broken. There's not enough time to get that appointment scheduled if they're calling on Thursday. You barely have enough time Thursday to fill your Monday appointment. God forbid that they call on Friday when you're out of the office. There's just, it just doesn't make sense. And it's, you know, we consider, I mean, I hope you consider your patients like a friend. I mean, you get to know them, like them, and they get to know, like, and trust you. And who does that to somebody they know, like, and trust? So hopefully they respect you more than leaving a message on your voicemail to tell you that they're not going to be there on Monday morning. So we're tracking all of this because if you have a lot of patients, look, 134 from January, February, March, April, there were 134 people who called to change their appointment. I mean, imagine the hours that person, the front office, spent on phone calls for patients changing. Why did 134 people, this practice has about 1,500 patients, and why did almost 10% of them call to change their appointment? They just didn't understand the value that you offered them at that appointment. And look at this, broken appointments, 250. That's huge. It's a huge amount of people. Um, so we, we actually track all of this. We track new patient numbers, where they came from. And coming soon, um, we have some doctors that are doing some direct marketing campaigns. So we're able to track that in the very few, near future with our metrics. We use Denimetrics. And these are, when we start working with our offices, the majority of our 
offices that we work with do have over 100 patients that need to be reactivated. They haven't been in for the last 18 months. A lot of patients were thinking they could save their way to prosperity during the economic decline by not coming to their dental office. And the economy is changing, so I highly recommend that you have a system in place that can quickly get your patients coming back in. We have a system that we've created for that. And you can see here that these patients here had never had a recare, but we're actually very seamlessly, very easily getting hold of these patients and we're enticing them to come back. So you can see as we work with the client from January, February, March, April, look at the current, current new patient. We're growing the practice and we're actually reducing those no-shows and last minute changes. You can see it here. What gets measured and monitored actually create, we get a system created around that inefficiency and we make a change. That's how you grow your practice. Step number five, the appointment confirmation. I suggest, I love it, that our clients text message their patients and make sure that you have two-way texting. So, as you can see here, what it shows is that they're confirming. If they need to change, they can't confirm. And this is the first message that will be sent to that patient, either email or it's going to be text messaged, and the patient just clicks to confirm it. Now, 30 days out, we have this sent to the patient. And if they need to change the appointment, they need to call, and the doctor's phone number is right there. So they can pick up the phone and call. You will see in the web portal, we use Solution Reach. All of our clients use Solution Reach, and you can email me at support at dentalpracticesolutions.com, and I can set you up with the person that we have there because for our clients, they give them a special they give them a lot of special things. So just let me know if you wanted to learn more about it. But they can actually send it out 30 days in advance and then the patients click to confirm. They'll get another message about five days, five business days before their appointment is to happen. And it's at that point in time that the patient engagement system knows to turn off any more messages to the patient. There are other patient engagement systems outside of Solution Reach. And I know that in the past, they were not able to turn off that messaging. So patients continually kept getting these messages to confirm their appointment when they had already clicked and said they'd be there. So I just wanted to make sure that you can also turn that off so you don't irritate your patients. The other thing I want to say is stop sending postcards to confirm appointments. They get lost in junk mail and many of us, I know I'm one of them, I don't check my mailbox as often as I used to. I don't know about you, but at my house we have electronic bills, so we get our bills in email and then we set it up through our bank online to pay those bills. So I don't like to have a lot of papers and Tuesdays junk email day in my mailbox and these postcards could and do get lost inside the junk emails like these little newspapers with coupons and ads for specials in my neighborhood. And if you're sending a postcard, it's very likely it could get stuck in between that and your patient won't even see it. So it's just all of us get dozens of emails every day. Personally, I prefer to get a text message to confirm any appointment. And as I'm talking to my friends, colleagues, other dental professionals, they're telling me that they prefer to get a text message. My 92-year-old aunt, she's probably going to be, I think she's going to be 93 this year, and she loves texting. She, and my friends who are in their 70s and 80s, they're texting. So just because somebody's older, don't think they aren't texting. They are. And when you first start texting your patients, I've been in your offices when you first start setting up this system to text message your patients. And you know what happens the first time your patients get a text message from you? your phone starts ringing off the hook because they're so excited. They can't believe they got a text message from their dentist. 
And imagine you can actually send a link in text message with a video to wish them happy birthday. We've got some of our hygienists that are creating videos to actually the team, the whole team can create a video introducing one of your new hygienists. The hygienist can reach out in a video and say, you know, I miss you. Please give me a call. And you can send out a an email to all the patients who haven't seen that hygienist. So it's really innovative the way that they've got these patient engagement systems working for your benefit to keep your patients coming back. Now, I want to share with you a bonus step. And for all of you who want new patients, I am suggesting that doctor actually take a moment. It may be during their day or at night, but a day or two before the new patient appointment. I suggest that doctor call the patient personally. Yes, some of you are about to hang up on this webinar right now, but be patient with me because remember, I'm talking about stepping outside the box. One of our new clients they actually, I investigated this area, and there is a lot of competition. They have a lot of big box. They're dental corporations all around them. So why will patients come to their beautiful multi-million dollar office? The doctor spent a lot of money. I mean, the office is absolutely gorgeous. But people, they listen to what their insurance tells them. And many of you have experienced this where your patients are telling them where they need to go. What dental office do they need to go to? And they go there. Well, this doctor is following my lead, my suggestion, and open to stepping outside the box. And his wife is a part of our team. I have to say that. I mean, just I'm being cheeky about this, but she believes in what I am suggesting for the team to do and she embraces it and kind of comes alongside and helps to get things done and I just love having her as part of the team she doesn't work in the office but kind of as in the background alongside and really helps to get things implemented so this team is stepping outside the box and I want to ask that if this is something that you would like your doctor to be open to that you talk about this at your team meeting why will patients come to your office why will they take out their credit card and pay for treatment it's because they know like and trust you and why do they know like and trust you usually it's because you've taken time with them you made them feel special. You took time to listen to their needs, their concerns, and you showed them how much you really care. So I recommend that our clients, the doctors, call each new patient before they step foot in your office. What are you going to say to them? You're going to call and introduce yourself. And you're going to ask them if they have any questions about your office or any concerns. It's a short and sweet message. You can leave a voicemail. And if they're there and you're calling at night, all the better. Because now they've heard your voice. They've made an initial connection. And then you can come back to your team and tell them what you found out about this patient. They're going to be pretty surprised that their dentist took a moment to call them before they even came to the office. Imagine that. Imagine what that will look like for your new patients stepping foot into your office and maybe you found out one more special thing about that patient or you your doctor found out about a concern they had at their last dental office and that's why they're coming there you already have a head start on them it's kind of like going on a first date with that guy and you kind of are looking on Facebook and you're trying to find out all about him all you can before you go on the first date because you want to make a good impression and it's the same thing with your patients. Now, how does this happen that doctor can do this? How do you get your doctor to do it? Well, you hopefully are having a morning team huddle. When you get this down to your to a science, you have the system in place. You know, the, the team huddle is not about going through patient charts. It's really a discovery session. Just what does everybody need to know that they don't know? That's all it's about. So if you're spending a half hour on this and you have a team like this, we've got two doctors and we actually have six employees. Uh, you just see three of the employees right there in the picture. I couldn't get them all in the picture, but they take about 10 minutes for this team meeting. It's really quick to the point. 
and doctor is going to report on their phone call that they made the night before and who's coming in maybe the next day they're coming in not this day that they're reporting on but they can introduce that patient so everybody can make a note about something special doctor learned about that patient and that patient already is going to show up because they have a connection with doctor the owner of the practice called so I want you to know that it's important to have them at the first hello the moment they step foot in your office they should feel special and I wanted to share with you I decided not to go to my regular dentist um he actually sold his practice and you know I wasn't familiar with the new doctor who took over and I just felt I don't know I wasn't you know it's a half hour drive there I'm I'm really picky about who my dentist and my hygienist are and I didn't know the dentist that bought the practice and I wasn't extremely thrilled with the hygienist. Um, I knew that when I had my colleagues in California, when we moved to Oregon, I changed doctors, you know, and changed hygienists. And when I was in California, my colleagues were my hygienists and they just did an exceptional job. And nobody's really gotten in there underneath the gums since I've been going to the hygienist here in Oregon. So it was like not a big deal to not make an appointment there. But I knew I needed to have a hygiene appointment. I knew I needed to have some x-rays. It's been at least three, if not five years, since I had a full mouth series. And I didn't go to Aspen Dental, but I'm using this as an example because it, my husband and I were driving around our neighborhood just running errands. And one of the shopping centers had a sign for a corporate dental office in our area. There's a few of the, these offices. One by our house about five minutes away. It said new patient special, $39. Now I'm thinking, you know, at least I should get x-rays and exam. And I wasn't quite sure, you know, if I get four bite wing x-rays, not a big deal to me. I've never had any decay since I was like 17 years of age, which was just yesterday. Not really. It was a, quite a few decades ago, but you know, I, I know I needed to have an exam. And so it said new patient appointment. $39. I'm thinking, well, for $39, I can't lose. And this will be kind of interesting to go in there. So think of me, you know, secret shopper. Um, I went to undercover. Some people don't like when I say I went undercover. So imagine that I'm a secret shopper, only I had to pay. One time I remember they had like Jamba Juice and even uh, some of the department stores in your area have secret shoppers. And you don't even know, the employees don't know that they're there. So I was like a secret shopper. And so I make my appointment, I go home and I go online to their website and I put in an appointment request. And on Monday morning by 11 o'clock, they called, really nice lady. She got me in when I wanted to come in, which was after their lunch break. So a few days later, I get in, I come in, I've got $40 in cash and I've already filled out my health history, my HIPAA, my, finan you know, my financial policy that I'm responsible for. And I don't have insurance. I have my $40 in cash. But I go in the minute I step foot in their office. Debbie, hello. They knew exactly who I was. And I used my name, Debbie Bitkey, and I put down that I didn't have an occupation. So uh, she says, we need you to sign your forms that you filled out online. So I'm signing the electronic form. And then I noticed the lady at the front desk who said hello to me, very, just impeccably dressed, very nice looking lady. I sit down and within five minutes, the doctor comes to personally get me. Young dentist. He starts, you know, shaking my hand, invites me into his beautiful office where we sat for about 10 or 15 minutes just chatting. And I'm asking him some questions about where he went to school, how long has he been with this practice, blah, blah, blah. Very nice man. He explains to me what's going to happen. He takes me over to his assistant who proceeds to take digital full mouth x-rays. She takes intraoral photos of all sections of my mouth. Then they take me into another room where he does a full mouth periodontal screening exam. I mean, furcations. Of course, I don't have any furcations, but he checked. Mobility, he checked everything. He explains to me about the hygienist. I mean, I was so impressed. The assistant was super nice. She spent at least 20 minutes with me. And now he tells me I'm going to see the hygienist. So the hygienist, she doesn't come right in. I have to wait. And I'm waiting about 10 minutes for her. She comes in. 
Now remember, I'm very happy, I'm pleased, but she proceeds to not even clean. She did not take her cure out. I shouldn't say that word clean. I just told you not to say the word clean. It's hard not to say that word, isn't it? But she proceeds to not go over every day. She's making a big deal about how clean my mouth is. And of course, being a hygienist previously, working clinically, I knew she didn't even touch every single tooth. And within 20 minutes, she was finished with me. And upon checking out at the front desk, when they went to make my next appointment, they explained that it would be over $150 not only to see the hygienist, but that I had to once again have an exam. And I said, well, I don't think I need to have an exam in six months. And she said, well, every single patient has to have an exam. If you want, we can set you up with this insurance plan that we have. With the insurance plan, I would pay $75, but the insurance plan was like $125, and then it would take it down to $75 for that appointment. Didn't make sense for me. So I'm going to a very professional office down the street from me, which I know exactly how much it's going to cost. They really could never pinpoint the exact amount. It kept flipping back and forth. So my point is that although they made a good impression on me, the communication in the end was not clear and concise. So really important um, to make a good impression, but also make sure that you can quote the fees correctly, which they couldn't. And I'm sure that being a corporate office, they had corporate training, but somehow uh, the lady at the front there didn't get the clarity on that insurance plan that you can buy from the office. It just was never really clear. So I am not going back. So here's step six, and it's training your team on elegant communication skills plus. And I added part B to step six, and this is also not just your communication, but your passion and enthusiasm. So what do I mean by elegant communication skills? These are areas that we train our teams, our clients in, but for the sake of this webinar, I'll tell you that whoever's answering the phone when that dreadful appointment change call comes in, this person answering the phone is responsible for helping this patient keep their appointment. Yes, it's the person on your team who answers the phone who has this important role of helping the person on the other end of the phone to keep their appointment. How do they do this? Well, they're going to pull out the big guns. And what are the big guns? This is knowing how to overcome patient objections to coming in for their next dental appointment. And what does this person taking the call do? What are the steps they take to overcoming this change of appointment? And number one is to tell your patient that you need to put them on hold. You're gonna put them on a short hold. Tell them it's gonna be about 10 seconds. Seriously, if you have this system in place, I'm gonna do a brief overview of this system. And it takes you about 10 seconds to pull up a response for checking, you're going to tell the patient, I need to place you on a brief hold about 10 seconds because I want to help you with this change that you're talking about. And now you will pull up the chart. Most of our clients have electronic charts, so they just click on the computer that's in front of them and they look in the computer and we've trained our client teams to write this last sentence in their documentation in the patient's record. And let me explain the documentation. It's PARP, Patient Appointment Return Value Benefit. And this is a statement that everyone writes so that any time a patient is going. So the value of doing this is, number one, when you write that in the chart, it's what you have talked about that's valuable and a benefit for the patient to return maybe for a routine preventive maintenance appointment. It could be why they need to return for scaling and root planning. It's why do they need to return for the implant? Why do they need to return for the restorations? It's a sentence and you'll actually say this when you're making the patient's next appointment. Why you're making the appointment and what is the benefit? Of course, it's already been discussed by doctor and or hygienist and assistant. And then they're going to hear it again. And then when they have forgotten, probably a few months later, it's in one ear, out the next. And they think their hair appointment's more 
important or they think they're something else has come up and it's more important for them but how can you help them you can help them by reminding them of this return for their appointment what is the value and benefit so you're going to pull up that statement and for example it might be let's say for example we have this patient named Sally who's a patient she has a family history of diabetes and heart disease she has bleeding on her upper left molars and in the last five years Sally's been coming in every six months but the hygienist Jenny at her last hygiene appointment discovered this area of bleeding and there's inflammation causing the bleeding and Jenny measured some four millimeter pocket depths with that inflammation and bleeding and Sally's always had three or less millimeter probing depths with no frication mobility recession etc that was out of normal limits so um, Sally knows that or excuse me Jenny knows that her patient Sally has a mother and a grandmother who have diabetes and Sally's father died of heart disease so at Sally's appointment Jenny talked about this using words such as Sally you have some inflammation on this upper left area around your molars it's considered active disease it's the start of gum problems you have some bleeding and yes many of our offices when I'm first observing in your offices what I hear is the hygienist saying B and I want you to know that Jenny didn't say B she said bleeding because it's important patients why do they think that bleeding gums are okay and why would we you know I asked the hygienist why are you saying B and they say because I don't want to scare my patient by saying bleeding and seriously I mean if somebody is bleeding from their arm or an orifice they're probably going to be calling 911 but then they come to the to your office and they say oh my gums always bleed bleeding gums are a sign of disease it's our role to tell them bleeding gums are not healthy and explain to them if your arms bleeding what do you do well of course they want to stop their bleeding arm or their bleeding finger but why don't they want to stop their bleeding gums so we need to tell them what to do we need to explain to them that is not healthy and that's exactly what Jenny did when Sally had bleeding gums and actually Jenny talked to Sally the bleeding in your gums it can lead to heart disease it can lead to diabetes and I know you have a family history of this and because of that Sally we're going to schedule you in four months because I want to make sure the bleeding doesn't come back I want to make sure you don't continue with active disease so we're not going to see you in six months we're going to see you in four but when Sally got her text message about the appointment three months from the first time that she made this original appointment Sally forgot what Jenny said and she wanted to change her appointment and so the lady Emily who took the call said to Sally I want to help you with this can you hold just a moment it'll be maybe 10 seconds I need to check something and when Emily came back she explained I can see that Jenny when she when you were here last time she took these pictures do you remember those pictures of the bleeding on the upper left oh gosh now Sally remembers yes oh my gosh yes I do remember that now and I know that Dr. and Jenny are extremely concerned about this because I know that you, you know it says in your medical history that your mom and your grandmother have diabetes and that your father died from heart disease and this is all how it starts is in your mouth is there any way that I can help you to keep this appointment with Jenny in three weeks from now and now Sally's like oh my gosh you're absolutely right well let me change that whatever it is that she was going to do that she thought was more important than her hygiene appointment and so it's our responsibility to really have a caring attitude and really come alongside of them and try to help them 
to keep their appointment. So it all starts with when we first discover what's going in their mouth, why do they need to come back routinely? It could be that we want them to always be healthy and continually talk to your patients about keeping not only their mouth healthy, but that when they have a healthy mouth, that they're going to have a healthy body and that we're here to help you live a longer and healthier life. And by coming in to see Jenny every six months, we know for sure you're more likely to have a healthy mouth. See how that can work for you? And when patients call to change their appointment, let them know. First step, I'll go over it again. You put them on a short hold and tell them, I want to help you to change. I want to help you with this. So put, I'm going to look at something in your record. I need to see your, your patient record, and I'll be right back. And then check for that statement. And when right now, if you're having a lot of cancellations, I want you to look ahead in your charts and write a PARF down. Write a PARF statement for these patients coming in because some of them, it's a, a pandemic right now. Some of them are still going to call to try and change their appointment. So have the statement in there and have this protocol in place where you look to see why. What's the value and benefit to that patient? And then the lady who's taking the call or the gentleman taking the call at the front desk can repeat that value and benefit and remind the patient, you know, did you take digital in photographs, internal photographs to show them that area of decay or where they need to have the tooth replaced because they're getting a bridge or an implant. So try to support the patient in keeping their appointment. See how that works. Try it out and over the next three weeks monitor that. Monitor the amount of patients who are calling to change their appointment. Everybody can just write, you know, like a you know, measure it like dot, you know, a line and measure it. You're going to have five lines. And then whoever's taking those calls writes down a line and you're probably going to have 25 people in the month of May that have called to change their appointment. And it's costing the doctor a lot of time when those people taking those phone calls have other things that are more valuable to the practice if they're doing that versus rescheduling all these appointments. So here's a PARV example. Mrs. Jones, I see that the last time you were here, Dr. Jones and Jenny, your hygienist, discovered the area of active disease. There was a lot of bleeding on those upper right back teeth around your molars. And I know doctors very concerned that this could lead to more serious gum problems, worse yet, other health conditions. With your family history of heart disease, it's imperative that you return every 90 days to stop any further health problems. And then you'll ask the question, how can I help you? What can I do to help you keep this appointment? That's your last question. It's not written in here, but you want to add it in your notes. What can I do to help you keep that appointment? There you have it. So when patients do leave your office, I wanted to make this a, so, a side note because we are monitoring, as you saw, we monitor everything that goes on in your practice when you're a client. And we see that a lot of patients each week are leaving, whether it's restorative treatment or a hygiene appointment, they're leaving without a next appointment. And I want to say that you have a plan in place to follow up with that patient two or three days later to get them scheduled and use your PARB statement when you call to schedule that. Everybody needs to be scheduled, even if they're a pilot or they're a snowbird and they're like, oh, we go away for the winter, we go away for the summer, we don't know when we'll be back. They know about when they'll be back. And they can always, when they get that first confirmation notice four weeks out, they can always let you know they need to change their appointment because they're a pilot and they're flying. Because they're a snowbird and they're going to stay at that part-time home a, a week longer. So th at least have them on the schedule so that they don't get lost. So um, now we have an amazing patient connection training. This is what we roll up our sleeves and get in there with you and your team is how to connect on this deeper level with your patients so that they have urgency to come back. 
Here's one thing that will really support you in getting your patients to come back. It's getting your patients excited about scheduling and paying for treatment. And that's your attitude. Are you just ho-hum, Mrs. Jones, we've got to get you scheduled. I need to schedule your cleaning in six months. It's having passion and excitement. It's being enthusiastic and loving what you do because what you do is not clean teeth. You don't hold endophiles and pass them to the doctor. The ultimate result is helping your patients to live a healthier and longer life. And that's what's exciting about dentistry. And if you're not excited about helping your patients, and if you don't know that they could live a longer, healthier life, and you don't believe that statement, first of all, I suggest that you Google that. And you can also look in PubMed.com or PubMed.org, either one of those, and say Oral Health Systemic Health Link and see the thousands of research documents on this evidence-based documents to show us this research we know for sure that oral health is related to their total health and that when they have periodontal disease it can contribute to heart disease diabetes arteriosclerosis even prostate cancer and colon cancer and breast cancer alzheimer's parkinson's on and on it's all documented so know that you're doing more than something just coming to an office to get a paycheck you're actually changing people's lives so what is it that you're passionate about helping your patients with what excites you that you do for your patients I mean how would you like to go to a doctor and you're getting a colonoscopy or a mammogram or a pap smear and they are they're just there to get their paycheck. I mean, hopefully they're there because they really are passionate about preventing disease and they're able to help come alongside you and, and create a partnership that if you do have a, a terrible situation with your health, that they can help you create a solution to live a longer and healthier life. And our hope is that we're going to those types of practitioners. So what type of healthcare practitioner are you? Now I wanted to talk about your repeat offenders. I wanted to mention this on a side note because there are these patients, I talked about my client who I love, the, you know, she came and called her her repeat offender patient and then there are those, well, these patients need a response for their act of crime. I mean, it's disrespectful that for them to consistently call and tell you that they need to change their appointment. It's disrespectful for them to consistently know who they are. They want that last appointment of the day, and then they always no-show. At least that's how it was. You know, I remember those people. There were a few of them in our practice when I was a clinician. I even remembered who that patient was. And it's very important that you let them know that you'll add them to a special list that when you have a change in your appointment, you'll call them to come in. And that's what my doctor did. When she called that man, she said, I'll tell you what we're going to do. Since you called so many times to change your appointment on the day of your appointment a few hours before your appointment what we're going to do since it's not that valuable to you is we're going to call you when we have an opening in our schedule at the last minute we'll call you and she doesn't really you know those kind of people she's like I don't need them in my practice and do you want those types of offenders coming into your office Maybe you want to ask them or tell them that they need to pay a 50% deposit that's non-refundable if they no show, but it goes towards their next treatment that they're coming in for. So if the hygiene appointment is going to be $150, you'll take $75 when they schedule that appointment, and they need to know that if they call within that time frame, or outside of the time, the cancellation time frame, if they call within an adequate amount of time, they can change their appointment. But that if they call the minute before or a day or two before, it's considered a broken appointment. And that broken appointment means that they lose their 50% deposit. 
Some of you have patients who have over a thousand dollars in treatment scheduled and they're calling that day to change their appointment. They're not showing for that appointment and doctor has reserved that time. The lab has gone to great extents to get their crowns or their implants there in plenty of time and now the patient's not going to be there. I mean, how disrespectful is that? So have your plan in place and then for those patients who are first time calling that they have to change their appointment and it's a day before, it's really important that you react with concern. I mean, I'm not somebody that typically calls to change any of my appointments. I block out my calendar on my iPhone and I make sure that it syncs with my Google Calendar as well. So I have all kinds of reminders and on my own I have reminders because I'm so aware of how it's affected the dental practice. I try not to be one of these offenders. So I would hope that if I had to cancel an appointment, change an appointment I should say, change my appointment last minute that my provider would say, are you okay Debbie? How can I, is there anything I can help you with? You know, it could be that there was a death in my family or, the, you know, there was some, you know, if I didn't show up that day, there's something terrible that's gone wrong because I'm very conscientious about my appointments. So with these types of people, you want to show concern when they don't show and when they need to change their appointment last minute. I mean, serious things happen. I had a patient, unfortunately, he was in transit between work and my hygiene, my, the appointment with me. And um, it was in California on a very rainy day and his truck flipped over and uh, not to freak you out, but he actually died. It's a really sad situation. So, you know, my, my point here is that when somebody does this for the first time, don't be so hard on them. You know, there are situations where we need to be forgiving and understanding. And it does happen. Life happens. Life gets in the way. And we do need to be understanding in those situations. Cancellations, no shows, changes to the appointment, they are inevitable. They're going to happen last minute, but we hope to reduce them. With graduations, reunions, weddings just around the corner today, right now is the best time to begin promoting tooth whitening. And also promote that to all new patients and offer it to your overdue hygiene patients to get them back in. There are so many ways that you can promote free whitening. So step seven is it's going to help you reduce your changes in appointments as well as grow your practice and this is Lifetime Smiles and this is a system that was created after one of the major dental companies asked me to be a part of their tooth whitening products and I started calling this system Lifetime Smiles Whitening. When you registered I gave you the information about this one system and how it has worked for our clients. So today is just a great time to start promoting it on your website uh, around your office, have a sign about it, put it on your Facebook business page. You can tweet about it on your Google Plus, send text messages to your overdue patients, and let your patients know that you're offering free whitening. It's just the in office tray whitening. And a lot of our clients, when they start offering this to their patients, they find that, that well, they're also explaining that they do have the in office laser whitening. And a lot of their patients will upgrade to the in-office laser whitening because they want to walk away with white teeth that day. And then they do get the trays for free, but they've paid a few more hundred dollars. Some of them are paying $600 that day as a new patient because, oh my gosh, I'm so excited to get the laser whitening. So it's just asking one simple question of your new patients and all of your hygiene patients at least once a year. The hygienist should be asking, Mrs. Jones, if there's one thing that we could do that would make your smile amazing, the best that it's ever looked before, what would that be? Just wave a magic wand. What, what would it look like if you did that? Something special to your teeth. And just wait for them to reply. You can also, you know, take the pictures, the intraoral photos like I told you I had done at that one office and you can show that, review them. You can take out a shade guide and ask them, you know, where do you think your teeth are on the shade guide? And everybody thinks they have yellow or gray teeth. 
I mean, most people, when you ask them and you, you know, show them or you ask them to point out on the shade guide where they think they are, they're going to show you that they think their teeth are more yellow or gray than they really are and show them where they really can be. Give them hope that they can have the most beautiful smile and the smile that they've been dreaming about but maybe never asked you about. The lady that helps me with my merchant account, I was talking to her about this system that we have in place for our clients about the tooth whitening. And she was so mad. She said, I just came from my hygienist's office. Imagine we were talking on the phone and she just came from her hygiene appointment. And she said, I would love to have my teeth whiter, but she never asked me about it. And I'm too embarrassed to ask her about it. So imagine a lot of your patients might not feel comfortable asking. Imagine this, there's this syndrome, it's called the what's in it for me syndrome, and people do pay more attention to doing something when they know there's something in it for them. And if they know that they can get free tooth whitening, and they know that if they follow your guidelines for when they're going to call, if they need to change their appointment, and that they need to show up, that twice a year they get these syringe, a syringe of tooth whitening to touch up their teeth. I can tell you that thousands of dental offices throughout the world, throughout the world, I mean, we have clients in Greece and Canada, all over the world, and they're using this system and they keep their patients coming back on time to their office. So their patients, we have all the forms and everything for you. You can order everything at like 40% less money than what you're paying right now because we get it from the same company you're getting it now, but we want to pass on the savings to you and we customize it so that your patient's living with a syringe that has your name, your brand, your logo, your office number on it, not another name. That means nothing to your patients but they can actually help to promote you and tell all their friends and family, look what I got at my office. Did you know my dentist before I even went there the first time he actually called to talk to me before I even came into the office? What do you think your patients are saying about you that's getting them excited and they're telling their friends and family and now their friends and family want to also come to you because you're enthusiastic, you're doing something exciting for them, they're excited, they're enthusiastic, and they're telling their friends and family. It's like a smile. If you smile, how many times do you think somebody's going to frown back at you? Most of the time, a smile is going to be contagious, right? Unless that person's traumatically upset, you don't smile at them then. But when you smile at somebody, usually that smile is contagious. And it's the same thing with you being excited about what you're doing for your patients. And if you have a way that can get your patients in there with urgency that they know it's going to make them feel good, it's going to help them live a longer life, and you're passionate, you're enthusiastic about it, it's like that smile. They get enthusiastic, and they're going to tell all their friends and family about it. Look what my dentist does. And we have this amazing system to reactivate, and I call it retraining your current patients to keep coming back to your office. We have this system to grow your new patient numbers. We have several things that we do. The whitening is only one of those that will grow your patient numbers. We will help you to enroll more in-office whitening patients and laser they will upgrade to the laser in office whitening. And with this whitening, with the smile evaluation that enrolls patients into the whitening, just even if you don't use the form that we have as a smile evaluation, even if you just ask that one question, if there's one thing that we could do, imagine I'm waving a magic wand over your teeth, what would you want them to look like? Just that one question you will notice you will start enrolling your patients into more high-end treatments like veneers, implants, Invisalign. You're going to have to replace old composites when those old com that patient wants their teeth whiter. Well, now those old composites aren't going to match. And maybe those old composites do need a new restoration. So when you start asking that question, you're going to find that you're enrolling more patients into these types of restorative treatments. I did want to just 
mention the team huddle again because I feel I just really want to stress the importance of this team huddle. You know, I've been talking a lot to you on this webinar about adding value to your patient appointments. And I want to add value for you attending this webinar. In case you haven't already noticed, I'm giving you more than just those seven steps. I'm hoping that you're gleaning some valuable nuggets and just one of them you'll take and start implementing. But I know many of you are listening to this as your team meeting. So I want to add this information about the team huddle. Are you doing a team huddle before you see your patients each day? It doesn't need to be that morning. Some of our offices do it at night or at lunch, and then the following day they're prepared. I recommend, I think it works best for a few minutes before. And for those offices who are listening to this and watching the webinar, and you have, you know, like uh, four hygienists and three doctors, etc., cetera, um, we actually have pods that we break you out into, and then we have um, like a relay system. So the pods meet, and then uh, we have a whole process and a system for that as well. But if you're in office like what I showed you on that slide with two doctors and six team members, it should take about 10 minutes. And you're just, it's a solid system that's in place. So you're not flipping through charts. And our system teaches you how to go through the important details of what you need to know to make the day successful but don't know. So you're talking about who's coming in, but what you need to know. You're not going through, they're getting a pro fee, bite wing x-rays, blah, blah, blah. You're going to say, Mrs. Jones is coming in today at 10 o'clock. I'm going to do a periodontal screening and a doctor exam. And the assistant will say, I'll be in there to do your charting for you. And you already know who's going to show up and come in to do the periodontal charting. So the hygienist can call those numbers out and engage the patient in the periodontal screening exam. So we have a whole system that we teach just like that. I wanted to also talk about having an ASAP list. And um, this is something that you have if you have Dentrix, they do have an ASAP list. But Solution Reach has an ASAP list in their portal that syncs with your Dentrix, EagleSoft, etc., Open Dental, all of that. And you can text if you have a that person at four o'clock they call to say they're not going to be there so you have a list of people like this all set up for four o'clock and you can send them a text message saying we have a four o'clock appointment available today not a cancellation occurred but that you have an available time at four o'clock you know they like that time who if they can get back to you as soon as possible they can take the appointment and they will just let you know that they've got that appointment they want the appointment usually you'll have just one or sometimes you know nobody's able to text you back that they can take that appointment but it does work to fill those open holes last minute because the text message goes out to a group of patients within 90 seconds so again you can just email me and I can get you set up to learn more about that and another feature I told you I'm talking about solution reach because 90 plus percent of our clients are using this it's helping them to grow their practice and reduce cancellations. That's why I like them. The other thing is if your patients have missed their appointment right away, you can send them a text message to reschedule unless they're one of those abusers you want to pick up the phone and call and talk to them. Um, but if it's, you know, and, and maybe you don't want to do this, but it's a really great way. We're having a hard time with some clients getting these patients on the schedule when they leave without a next appointment. So you want to always follow up when somebody misses their appointment or refuses to schedule before they leave your office. Always, always, always follow up within the next two, one, I would suggest one to three days. Within the next three days, they need to have had that call with the PARB. Always make sure that you're an advocate for your patient. We're not here to just tell them this is what we found today. We're actually coming alongside of them and helping them to see what's going on in their mouth. We're an advocate for them to make the best decision, not only for their oral health, but for their total health. Everything that you do, talk about the benefit. How is this going to benefit your patient, even especially when you're calling to make that appointment that they've not scheduled, and especially when they call to change their appointment. 
Um, I wanted to also mention recare, 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 like location, location, location. You've got to work the recare system every week. And there's one team member that always needs to be a held, they're held accountable, they're in charge of working the recare system. You can change it to be a different team member each month, but make sure that somebody knows it is getting done. So what is your plan to reactivate your overdue hygiene patients this month? Who's leading this system and who's making sure it gets done? If you work the system, you're going to see, and like you saw in our chart earlier with that graph, from January to April 30th, we reactivated. We're seeing a lot more patients in just that one example of our client I showed you. Remember your why, and you should be passionate and enthusiastic about why you do what you do. And um, what will you do differently tomorrow? What is one nugget that you really liked from the webinar? What are you choosing to implement and start doing differently? Do you remember this game recently? It was in the playoffs, the second round series. There wasn't much between the Warriors and the Portland, Oregon Blazers. Just two close-knit disciplined teams whose efficient, captivating offenses energetically traded runs, highlights, and three-pointers for five games. In the closing stages and in the final moments of a fantastic game five, Golden State was able to separate in spectacular clinical fashion. And last Wednesday, before the Wednesday before this webinar is being recorded, the Warriors defeated the Portland Blazers 125 to 121. And for the second time in three days, MVP player Stephen Curry of the Golden State Warriors stepped forward with the game on the line, scoring seven points in the final 25 seconds to finish off my hometown Portland, Oregon team, the Blazers, and a team that ran itself ragged in pursuit of an upset. And there was only less than 30 seconds left, and Golden State was nursing only a two-point lead. Golden State hadn't scored in the previous two minutes. They missed three straight shots and committed an ugly turnover. But Steve Stephen Curry or Steph Curry approached the possession as if oblivious to pressure and the thousands of standing fans surrounding him, unaware of Portland's forward, Al Farouk, who was shadowing his every move. And I share this with you because... What you practice every day and what you go through during your regular season, let that be these kind of moments. Steph Curry, he didn't just work hard during these great championship games. I mean, he trains hard all the time every day. And it's not about you working hard every day but it's about training hard. And I want to congratulate those of you who are sitting there watching this webinar together as a team because you are experiencing level one of training. And what exactly does it look like when you are training hard, not working hard, but when you take time like this in a team meeting to train? If you want more good information like you heard on this webinar, if you want a system to follow so that everybody is working as a cohesive team, the right hand knows what the left hand's doing, and the left hand is working in harmony with the right hand, and nobody's having to write anybody up because they're not doing what they're supposed to be doing. But you come to the office and you know where you're supposed to be at what point in time. You know what the goals are and you're able to accomplish them because you have a system in place. If you want more of this, I want to recommend that you click this link, bit.ly forward slash schedule call now of uppercase. And let's just take 15 minutes to just chat about your system and how you can just train, not work so hard. Some of you might be hygienists watching this or listening now, 
and you want your doctor to support you with a periodiagnosis that needs to be made and isn't being made. Some of you are dentists and you just want to come in to do that patient exam and have the patient set up by the hygienist to accept their treatment and you would like it to be a plan and a system in place where you walk in and the patient knows that they need to schedule for A, B or X, Y and Z and all you do is say I agree with what Jenny said today let's get that scheduled. How would that make your life easier? And we have a system that gets all of these things created in a plan according to your goals. It's a system so that when anybody comes to work in your practice, they can open up the guidebook for your office and how you want things run, doctor, and everybody knows what is the plan. What do we do when we first come to the office? What do we do with the new patient? How does that doctor hygiene exam go? And what happens when we're scheduling that next appointment? What happens when the patient leaves and doesn't schedule that next appointment? And so if you'd like to find out more about this, just take 15 minutes so we can talk about solutions. There's no commitment to spending 15 minutes together. And if you'd like to walk away from this doing nothing more than just a 15 minute chat and hopefully we'll leave as friends, nothing ventured, nothing gained. We'll just leave as if we met and we're friends and we'll say hello when we see each other at a dental conference one day. However, if you like what you hear on that 15 minutes, we can possibly schedule another time to chat more about how I can support you in accomplishing your goals. But I also want to let you know that for those of you listening to this, there are only 10 spots over the next like 10 days for these 15 minute appointments. And not everyone is a good fit for us and it's possible that we're not a good fit for you. But I'd like to have just 15 minutes to say hello and see how I can come alongside of you to support you so that you have a great life and your day at the office is so much easier than it is right now. I want to invite you to start dreaming about your next level of success and what that might look like just as if you're asking your patient if there's one thing that we can do to help your smile be the best most beautiful smile that you've ever dreamed of having. What does that look like? And now it's my turn to ask you what does your day look like? What does your daydream look like if I could wave my magic wand? And if you're not sure or maybe you have an idea, please take a moment to just schedule 15 minutes so I can talk to you and possibly create a plan to support you on that. And I want to say thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you and I'll see you on the next webinar. Bye for now.